Thank you, Abraham. Um, good morning, everybody. Well, first, of, well, let me see if I, I should probably move forward over here and get. So, thank you. First of all, thanks to to Kerry, to Babson for having me here. Uh, not being part of the Babson network, but still a a great pleasure to be able to to spend some time with you and. And this exchange with many of you has been just fantastic. I also want to thank especially another person who was the one that actually connected me to you, which was John Matone. Thank you, John. Uh, John has been working with us in Claro for quite some time, and that's how I, I got to be here and hopefully be able to share some interesting information. And I'm sure that I'm going to get a lot more back uh, from all of you. Um, and I'm sure that we will be able to talk about family business. I will address that for sure. It's in the America Mole's DNA, and I'll talk about America Mole in a bit. I'll talk about global investing. I, I thought that that was, I, I saw that that was something that was of, of your interest. Entrepreneurship, for sure. There will be elements of entrepreneurship, and hopefully I'll be talk, talking also about social enterprise, which I think were the four, um, pillars of what you are addressing these days. On top of that, well, I'm not a talker, so I, my apologies for that. I'm not good at that. Uh, my English is somewhat rusty. I'm, I work in a Latin American corporation, so I don't get to use it and practice it as much as I would like to. So my apologies for that. Uh, if I have uh, a little bit of a trouble uh, communicating correctly, but and, and thank you, Abraham, again, for uh, you introduced me. I was going to tell you a little bit about me. Yeah, for sure. Quick summary, uh, studied here, uh, born in Bogota, grew up in Colombia, studied my undergrad in Colombia, went to the US, 17 years outside of the country, and yes, I came back uh, to um, uh, work with Claro. Uh, prior to that, I was with Moro for about 15 years, as Abraham mentioned. And all that time, for the most part, I was, uh, as an outsider, dealing with America Mobile as a company, uh, me being in the position of a supplier. 20 years of telecom. So let's start about telecom. And before I um, go in depth into Latin America, let me talk about telecom for a second. Let me take a minute and talk about what telecom is today. I think we all have different perspectives of telecom. Telecom has been an industry that has thrived in the, the last years. Uh, I think that many of us can go back maybe 100 years and think about fixed telephony and how that went about. Today, I don't know, eight of every 100 uh, persons in the world have fixed telephony available to them. So it took us a, 100 years to do that. We clearly have been present through the during the uh, evolution of mobile, and which has been very impressive, and I don't know, 80, about 70%, 75% of the population in the world today has, has access to a, a mobile phone. But really, telecom is a very different story today. It is changing really, really quickly. And I'm, I'm going to connect this later on to what are the challenges of, of the company and what the company is living through. But in reality, internet is all about what telecom is, into, is today. And it's clearly, that evolution is clearly a function of the investment that goes into the networks and the efforts that are done in order to get devices into the hands of people, for people to be able to use the networks. It's, it's simple. It seems very simple, but at the end of the day, it has taken us a, a, the world 100 years to get there. But today, we talk about 300 million computers connected to the internet uh, from a, a wireless standpoint. 1.9 billion smartphones today in the world, and it's foreseeable uh, that we'll see about 5.6 billion smartphones connected to the internet um, in, by the year 2020. Um, and we're going to be talking about probably about 25 billion connections in total. So. That really is the world of convergence. I was talking about the fact that internet is, is the name of the game. Uh, we've all heard about convergence. We've all heard about the 
multi-display, and that is that world in which everything is connected to, to everything, and, and we've talked about the machine to machine, and internet of things, and the internet of everything. I'm sure that you've all heard all those, those different terms, but it only talks about a lot of data flying from one side to the other, and we're talking about big data and cloud and all those elements that make part of, of that. that. And again, so the name of the game is broadband, and that's why I have Mr. Slim here, and I'm going to talk about Mr. Slim in a bit. He's the president of the Broadband Commission uh, worldwide, and that's the name of the game, broadband, and it's ultimately capacity and speed. That's everything that will be going behind the uh, telecom industry in the world. So let's move on and talk about the Latin America uh, telecom. Um, Latin America in telecom is a history of government uh, investments. About 25 years ago, all of the different countries started investing in, in telecom and, uh, and even further behind if we talk about fixed telephony, but talking about cell phones and mobile, it's 25 years ago, government participation, a very quick process of privatization that took place in pretty much all of the countries in Latin America, uh, a phase of consolidation right after, and clearly in Latin America for us, that live in, in, in Latin America, can, I think we can understand the fact that um, telecom is probably the only area of infrastructure that is, not, that is up to par with the rest of the world. Uh, and obviously, and we Colombians experience it further since our infrastructure really has a lot of deficiencies. But uh, that, that's pretty much the norm for the rest of the, of the region. Infrastructure is really a challenge. Now, the last couple of words in terms of Latin America is today is pretty much a two-player uh, game, uh, America Mobile, which I'm going to speak to in a bit, and Telefonica, which is the Spanish company that has made significant investments in the region. There are other players, but clearly, if you look at it, it's probably 70 or 80 percent of the industry that it is concentrated in those two players in Latin America. So let me talk quickly about what's America Mobile. America Mobile is uh, the parent company of Claro, the company that I had here in Colombia. It's a company that was, it's, it's really a child, 15 years old. Um, the history probably started about 20 years ago, when, or a little bit more than that, when actually Telmex, the fixed telephony services company in Mexico was privatized, again, and here's where the family business comes in. It was uh, Mr. Slim who made that acquisition and who started the evolution of the company, uh, as I said, in about 15 years. A lot of entrepreneurship, really uh, little cells that started trying, for example, the mobile telephony services and little by little got that up to speed. And today it is a company that is present in 18 countries in the Americas, and I say Americas because um, in, uh, it also has a presence in the U.S., a different presence, it's an MVNO, it's a virtual network operator, but still pretty significant. It's, it's, a, it's an operation in the U.S. of about 35 million subscribers in the U.S. Uh, but and we are going to talk about global investing as well. And I think that's something that the company has started to do. Uh, recently, the company, America Mobile, acquired uh, Austria Telecom, operates in eight countries in, in Europe. Different ballgame, different ballgame. But uh, for sure, it's part of the process of evolution of the, of the company. In all, in all accounts, what has happened in those last 15 years or so is it is today a company that has revenues of $67 billion um, and is the eighth carrier in the world if looked from a standpoint of revenues, is the fourth carrier in the world from the standpoint of connections, the number of connections, and I'll talk about that in a bit. So let's move on and talk about Colombia, Claro Colombia. Same story, first acquisition of the company occurred in, in the year 2000. Since then, it has been three carriers, three uh, 
mobile carriers and eight cable companies that have been acquired and merged into Claro Colombia. Uh, it went from being a second distant player uh, in the year 2000 to the leader today. Um, it has 55% of the mobile telephony in Colombia, which is about 28 million subscribers. Mobile internet, which is another, about 5 million subscribers. Paid TV, 44% of the market, which is about 2 million services of paid TV. Internet to the home, about 1.8 million services of, uh, of internet to the home, about 32% of the market. And fixed telephony, which is about 1.3 million subscribers of fixed telephony and about 21% of the market, clearly that business having started earlier. Colombia represents about $5.5 billion of the $67 billion for, for America more in the world. And it has about ex expenditures, and I'm going to highlight the expenditures because it exp exp invests about a billion dollars in Colombia yearly. About 70% of the profits of the company have to go back in in order to make sure that we keep up to speed with technology and we keep up to speed to, with our services. And I took the liberty to put there the Jim Collins Good to Great book right beside the Claro logo. And the reason is, if you were to look at it as Jim Collins review, uh, talked about the companies, uh, actually Jim Collins studied about 15 years. Companies that were successful growing for 15 years consistently at rates of 10% of or more year after year. That's the case of Claro. Um, but uh, I think we can talk about what, what's coming as well uh, because there is a changing business model for telecom companies all, all, all around the world. Um, and that's why I bring uh, also a, a slide that has not only good to great, but should, and that's where kind of my, where my head is today uh, as CEO of Claro Colombia, and that is how the mighty fall. I don't know if many of you have read these books, but it only talks about the fact that um, there are points in which companies really need to rethink themselves, uh, in which companies need to make sure that 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 changes is that you can evolve, that there is an evolution from a. And in our case, I, I see it as, as something that the culture of the company today has been a culture of discipline and execution and very focused on growth, on deployment of a network, but that no longer seems to be an issue, uh, a possibility. We definitely need to change. And um, the thing is, we, we need to change why. I think the, the um, world is changing in the sense that, and you many have experienced that, voice services are, the revenues are declining. Um, the telecom industry is becoming very, very regulated, uh, very regulated that makes it very difficult and special in our case in Colombia. On top of that, the regulation comes from, from, the, from a government that is also a competitor. They own, the government owns, and Colombia is unique in that sense. Uh, in Colombia, the privatization did not take place as, as it was not completed as it was in the other countries, so that it's really a challenge. On top of that, data, and what we were talking about broadband, is becoming the name of the game. Lots of investments going behind, lots of cost in order to provide service. So really a chance, and, and that makes uh, a motivation for change. Uh, so again, cultural change. We gotta behave different, do something different. Uh, we cannot stay where we are at, and I think that's a story for many of us in business of being able to really figure out when is the time and how to drive that change. Lastly, I wanted to talk to you about um, the social Claro and how Claro has made a difference in, in Colombia, making those investments, taking telephony, mobile telephony to all of the uh, pretty much coverage of 100% of the country, um, bringing prepaid services into the market, um, doing what the company knows what to do, and that is taking communications, and probably I'll talk about 15 million of those subscribers today pretty much talk for free. They, can, they don't pay for their 
calls that they receive, it makes a big difference. Security being an issue for this country uh, some years ago, uh, we're glad to see that that is improving and changing and getting better. But for sure, telecommunications was a, a, a critical element um, in that. The other part, which is what I show here, is, is education. I think that education in, in Latin America, and it is Mr. Slim's passion in terms of making sure that that network is used towards having a better society, a more educated society. So undoubtedly, telecommunications is really a good tool to be able to support and to move education, education forward. In the case of Claro, in the last year and a half or so, we have invested about $60 million in, in getting devices, tablets to the students, uh, developing a platform that, which is EduClick, which is kind of a, the Wikipedia of, of education for the Colombian uh, educators and students so that they can exchange five-minute um, videos of lessons and so forth. So, Clearly, there's an opportunity for, for a company to, to do that. The last message, I think, and f as for a, an organization as, of Babson, as Babson is, that change is driven through entrepreneurship. And our challenge today, as a large corporation as it is today, is how to rebuild entrepreneurship into an organization like ours. I think that's something that uh, an organization like as Babson should look at it. It's not only the entrepreneurship when uh, one as a, as a business person starts a new venture, but it's also an opportunity to how to figure out how a large corporation um, does entrepreneurship or in, implements entrepreneurship within its organization. So thank you very much for the opportunity of being here. Thanks again, Kerry, and, and all of you. Take some questions? Sure. Hi, about the future, I think that um, telephone is not gonna uh, it's not gonna be done by minutes. I think it's gonna be done by Wi-Fi. What's the future coming up for all the um, uh, mobile phones, meaning Earth time? You're absolutely right. I, I think that um, when I introduced the concept of broadband. Uh, and when I said that uh, revenues from the voice services, which is the vast majority of our revenues today, are being um, cannibalized by those services, for sure. Um, consumers are starting, first of all, the technology, as I said, is converging, and voice is starting to go through the protocols of internet. So all of the voice is going to be delivered in the future via internet. Be, be that Wi-Fi, as, as you mentioned, which ultimately has a network behind of it, which is a fixed network for the most part, but also through the mobile network. And you're seeing that, you're, the voice over IP, many of you, I'm sure, use um, many of these services, like Skype or so, which ultimately is having a voice service added to video in, in a way in which it's ultimately delivered via internet. And for sure, that's going to happen, and that's why we're seeing that real challenge for us, which is having those services being cannibalized, those revenue being cannibalized, at the same time that you have to provide a new technology to provide those services via data, via internet, which requires a, an incredible um, investment. And, and that's the challenge for the industry. No different for Colombia or, or America Mobile. That's kind of the challenge in the world today. Because for sure, the real challenge is the amount of investment that has to go behind it. So your competition is going to be the mobile phones or other companies coming into this system, into this world. Uh, the competition will be the mobile phones. No, I think, I think we're all at, at the end of the day. For sure, a lot more competition is coming. For example, uh, one uh, a a new player. I mentioned that the Latin America is at majorly a two-player game. There will be a third player very soon, which is AT&T. AT&T acquired DirecTV. Uh, DirecTV has a, quite a good presence in Latin America, and I'm sure that it is envisioned to be 
a player in Latin America. AT&T was a player in Latin America. AT&T was 10% owner of America Mobile just a year ago. They sold out in order to acquire DirecTV. Um, so for sure competition will be part of the game. Uh, and for example, I'll tell you that in Colombia, only two years ago it was, was only three carriers. Today it is nine carriers. So it is a lot of offerings, a lot of, and, and for sure the data services are opening the game for, for, for many people. But I think the real competition is ourselves. The real competition is how to be able to uh, let go of what made us successful and really be able to move on to the next wave and provide uh, with very high quality the, the new services that need to be delivered. Good question, good question, yeah. tough question. Good morning, Juan Carlos, uh, Sergio Mikelsen. I have a slightly different question, which is not in respect of competition, but rather, how do you see the role of Claro in connection with the, let's say, the evolution, the development, the improvement of quality of life in Colombia? And in that respect, what I mean is, as you know, we're having more and more smartphones, and that is giving access to everyone in connection with, obviously, education, health, security, and the likes. How do you see that from the perspective of just a Colombian citizen having Colombia being able to compete against many other nations? And more specifically with respect to Claro, how do you see the role of Claro actually helping us Colombians meet those challenges moving forward? Well, let me, let me address that question in two ways. I think let's look at the past for a second. Let's recognize our past. And that is, as, as, as you well know, Colombia has had many challenges, both security and infrastructure. I think those, those are two real clear elements that Colombia has had as a challenge. And, and we like to say in the company that, that the efforts that, that Claro has made in the last 20 years, taking communications, mobile communications, to pretty much 100% of the, of the country, which is a real challenging country in the sense of very of regions that are very uh, that are not well connected but clearly uh, mobile communications in Colombia changed the life of the of the, of the people already um, and that is and I think there are two things that in, and this is an anecdote two things that have changed the life of the country and the quality of life of people living all, all throughout the country motorcycles and the mobile phone because people would not be able to get anywhere in the, in the country, and that's today a reality. And people would not be able to talk to pretty much anybody except for their neighbors very close because it was so difficult to get from one place to the other. So that has already been a reality. But let's talk about the broadband. Let's talk about broadband. What does that mean for the country? Um, World Bank says that for every 10 points of penetration of broadband in a country, it represents about one to two percent um, income, uh, the net income growth. So that's clearly a focus of where, where we're at. Clearly part, part of a business, uh, as we said, for example, in, tel in teleeducation, clearly a, a point in which is a pain point in the case of Colombia. Education is really a challenge in Colombia. So there, that's a way in, in using the technology, the network, in order to be able to provide that to consumers. Health, as you very well know, health, and that is a problem not only for Colombia, that's a problem for all the countries in Latin America, providing health outside of the cities, of the, of the um, urban areas is really a challenge. That's starting to happen. We're starting to have uh, sessions and communications for, for telemedicine to occur. So I think that for sure, even if we are not able to resolve many of, of the problems, and I'm not saying the government is doing a lot of uh, an incredible work to improve the, the infrastructure of the country in terms of ports and um, hospitals and so forth, with, with the advancement of connectivity of broadband for sure is, is an, an element of development for the country of, of, of having a, a better Colombia.
Uh, one question with regards to, to banking. You see, for example, in India, mobile banking had pick, has picked a lot. How do you see that happening in Colombia, in Latin America, and how is Claro doing that to help the, the people that have never had a phone in their lives? Because now if they have a phone, they will have access to, to a bank account and they will be able to, to manage their money better and, and improve. And, and how is Claro helping or, or working towards that, that goal? I think, I think your question is, is really two questions in one. One is, is, is devices, and, and at the beginning of, of my remarks, I talked about the fact that um, the adoption of technology is a function of two things. It's a function of the investment that goes into developing a network, and it's a function of the commercial uh, um, efforts that are done in order to get technology into the hands of consumers. And um, I will tell you that a few years ago, when, when America Mobile uh, invested in, in Colombia, one of the decisions that was made was to subsidize uh, the cell phones. Uh, you would, as a company, buy a cell phone for 100 and resell it to the consumer for 50 in order to, uh, or hoping that the consumer would be using the network and those revenues would come back. Um, so that's, that's one part and we continue to do it today. For example, the, the challenge is only getting uh, higher in the sense that smartphones are definitely much more costly than a normal device. And getting smartphones into the consumers is the way in order to get broadband into consumers. In the case of Colombia, getting broadband to all of the corners of the country via fixed with a fiber optic and like many other countries have it is, is really a challenge, very expensive. The only way is using wireless as a, as a solution. Um, from that standpoint, and, and connecting that into your banking um, question, once we have been able to put smartphones into all of the Colombians, and that is being done by a very heavy um, financing program that we have put in place, uh, I would say that within a year, probably Claro has become, if not the largest, one of the largest banks uh, in, in Colombia. Why? Because Ultimately, you are financing uh, the, 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 that amount of smartphones for people to buy it on installments. That's, that's the new way that we have found in order to be able to accelerate the amount of smartphones that people are using. And smartphones will connect in order to have the proper banking solution, in order to have inclusion in banking. Two things need to happen. Regulation, and, and the good thing is that's, that's happening the country is working towards a regulation that allows different companies to provide pseudo-banking services that allows that e-banking through the, through the mobile phone. And the other part is having that ecosystem, having all the people having access to smartphones that you can perform your banking transactions from your phone. I don't know if I answered your question, Manuel. And maybe following on that question, because I think that was a part of my original question, where do you see five, ten years from now a company such as, as yours competing with banks? Do you see America Mobile as a bank, or do you see banks continuing to exist? Um, I think, and, and, and well, first of all, it's not my company, but <laughs> so I, I only wish, but. But let's, let's say that I, I personally believe, in, and it's not only what I personally believe, it is how we are executing. And, and I think that a company like Claro should not, and, and I think that's the, everybody would say, don't divert your efforts from where, what, what you know how to do. Um, and, and what we have developed just recently is a company in which all banks and all carriers uh, have like a clearinghouse in order to do banking. For sure, uh, it is not as of our interest to do banking as a company. Uh, there is a, lots of complexity of doing that, which would divert us from resolving the issue that I presented to you just a minute ago. And the real issue for us is how to make sure that we have the capacity and the ability as a company 
to be able to make the investments to provide the IP services that need to be provided in the midst of having a real challenge of revenues, voice revenues being uh, cannibalized at the same time. So that's, that's really that point in where, where we have to make those changes as a company and to adapt. Very good. Thank you, Carrie. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you, Carrie. Thanks. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you. I, I want to, uh, to, to thank um, Juan Carlos for this fascinating discussion. And I think it's particularly interesting in the context of General Electric now just making the decision to get out of the financial industry oh, yeah. business uh, so rapidly right now. And Jack Welch, at that moment when he realized that he could finance uh, refrigerators and, and all sorts of appliances, took his company in that direction. And, and it really drove profitability for, uh, for General Electric for so many years. So this is an interesting moment for Claro. And it's, a, it's great to be able to have this conversation together today.